So first of all, I'm gonna preface this video by saying this is not anyone in the tech community's problem. It's an Intel problem. And this goes on to also talking about what I do as a tech channel and what I guess others do as a tech channel, right? My job, I think that my job is to give you guys recommendations on good products and bad products and say, don't buy this product or buy this product. And I think it's that simple when you break it down what a tech YouTube channel does. But then there's also outside of that, every tech channel is gonna have their unique flavor. And I guess mine is used parts, extracting even more value on that side, as well as mixing in some economics and looking at whether you should perhaps buy now or wait and buy later. Because maybe there's supply demand issues in tech itself, or maybe there's other monetary conditions which could affect prices quite big. For instance, cryptocurrency and things like that. Anyhow, when we get back to this Intel issue, there is one thing that I will always do though, and that's I will always talk to you guys about things that I hear on the street and whether it's from retailers, from, from people I meet, and they've got good information that at least pertains to what I'm experiencing. Now, with the i9 13900K and 14900K, recently level one text Wendell, awesome guy, I'll put the link to his video up here. And also after that, Gamers Nexus talking with Wendell, made their own videos talking about the Intel i9, specifically the i9 13900K and 14900K CPUs and the recent controversy surrounding them and the crashes. But I would say after these videos, especially the one that Wendell made, there's no longer controversy. Wendell actually provided a lot of concrete facts in that video where they've got data that they're sourcing, not just from game servers and also people uh, in the game developing industry, but also Wendell managed to, even in that video, go a level beyond level one. He went to level zero. I really implore you guys to check out that video because it's gonna relate perfectly to what I'm talking about today. And what also I've been talking about now for quite some time. And that is, I believe there is an input output issue. Though in the case of the server side industry, there is, I would say, absolutely no variance there for problems. Those users cannot have problems while they're trying to operate a business. And I think Wendell referred to one of the providers that had uh, lost over $100,000 they estimate just because their server was crashing and they were using an Intel CPU. Anyhow guys, let's unpack all this and more right after today's video sponsor. If you wanna get rid of this annoying activate Windows message, then today's video sponsor SCD Keys has you covered for as little as 15 US dollars. After you enter that coupon code BFTYC, you can cop yourself a legit single end user license today. Also works for Windows 11 Pro 2. Links in description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. You guys are messaging me behind the scenes going, Brian, you're spot on, man. Wendell's video, it's vindicated you and it's uh, you know given you sort of proof behind what I was saying. And that was, I believe that the 13900K issues spanned, that I was having spanned from the input output hub that they installed on the CPU in a Frankenstein kind of way. That's what I was told at Computex. I was told this from someone who I definitely know knows their stuff when it comes to CPUs. And they're in a group that talk to people and they talk to the right people. So when I was reading what he was telling me, I was like, yeah, this is, I think the public should definitely know about this, especially my viewers. I care about you guys a lot. That's the reason why I made that content even over a year ago, providing I didn't have concrete evidence and I didn't have scientific data because if I can save someone perhaps $100,000 because they're running a server. But anyway, guys, let's start from the start. What's basically gone on? And I'll put the links to the videos I've made in the past as well, because this is like a pretty like progressive story now that just keeps coming out with new information and new news. And basically my whole journey with the i9-13900K started when I was just heavily using the CPU for editing videos. In fact, my method of editing videos is probably old school in that I could make a heap of different uh, shortcut hotkeys that would save me a lot of time. But then again, I come from an RTS background on playing video games where I like to snap my mouse around a lot with a fingertip grip and I like to do what would essentially be a lot of actions per minute. For instance, Marco, he's a guy who works at Azus Tor NAS. He's in the comments section a lot here at Tech yes City. He's seen me edit videos at Computex when time is very uh, strapped and he can attest to the snap, right? That you need a system that is completely fast and responsive 
and it doesn't have any hiccups or any issues. And what I came into when I was using the i9-13900K, it was actually happened a little bit before Computex 2023, but during Computex 2023, I was pulling my hair out. That was, it was just unbearable. I'm trying to get the work done and I'm on overdrive. I've got caffeine going through my system. I'm, and who knows what else was going through my system, going to all these other parties and, and working hard. But the bottom line is I'm working, I'm getting things done. And then I'm not getting things done because my system is holding me back. And I showed people in 2023 what was going on and what were the issues I was having with the i9-13900K so they could see it for themselves. They know it wasn't all in my head. But then I was at a particular area at Computex 2023. And let's just say the right people were there with the right information because I started talking about it. It was on my mind. Computex 2023, this whole thing was on my mind. I want to get to the bottom of it. I want to know if it is all in my head. Perhaps I just got an extremely rare case of having a bad CPU. Perhaps I just got unlucky and this 13900K was actually faulty and it managed to be the 0.001% that passed it through the tests and made it onto the field. And the answer was no, that wasn't the case because I spoke to other people then. They said, Brian, it's not in your head. That 13900K is sluggish for a reason. And that reason is the input output hub has been removed directly off the die. Now, of course, it's not directly off the actual CPU itself. It's still on that silicon piece that is on the actual CPU PCB. But they said it's not like, for instance, the i9-10900K. The input output hub on that CPU, for instance, had a direct connection to the CPU. And that's why you're experiencing your problems. It hasn't been designed properly. The CPU, the i9-13900K, hasn't been designed properly. And I sat back and I thought to myself, hallelujah, this is the answers I was looking for. And so I thought, finally, I've got answers here. And I really, why is no one else talking about this in the tech scene? I wanna share this straight away so people cannot have that shitty experience that I had on a flagship CPU. This is the whole thing. I'm frustrated back then, and I'm even frustrated talking about it now because you don't pay good money to get crap. That's why you buy the flagship. It's like any other market, right? You go to the car market, right? Do I want a banged up uh, a Hyundai Excel when I'm paying Kia Stinger money? Absolutely not, right? If I'm buying a Kia Stinger, I want my warranty. I want that thing to work absolutely fine. And if there is a problem, a rare problem, I'd want to know that the person I bought it off, the dealer, for instance, the Kia dealer, is going to fix my car up and make it like it should be. And so this is the biggest problem with this CPU. Not only is it having problems, but it's also having problems that are getting pulled under the rug. Intel's not giving a direct answer onto exactly what the problem is. But as we heard from Wendell at Level 1 Techs, they're not making good on these problems. They're not replacing the CPUs for the customers, and they're just sort of trying to hope the whole issue will go away. But this is the thing, when it starts affecting server industry and data side clients, it's not going away. These guys need their systems to work flawlessly. And when they're not working flawlessly, then you're ultimately most likely gonna lose a customer, but also you may even get a lawsuit on their doorstep. So Intel's in a lot of shit right now, but the reason is they're in a lot of shit is because the way they're handling this as well, keeping everyone in the dark and saying, oh, we don't really know what's going on right now. Baseline profile updates and stuff like that. When I heard over a year ago from a guy in Taiwan what the exact issue was. So Intel knows about this issue. I know that they know. And now other people are starting to get a lot of data compiled together and they're starting to find out what the real issue is. And in Wendell's video, if you look at what he was saying there, there was a lot of IO errors coming up when they were analyzing the data dumps and they were analyzing the crash errors. There's a lot of input output errors that are coming to fruition. And these errors essentially mean that there's a problem with the input output hub and all the way it's connected to the CPU. Again, I'm not a CPU architect. I'm just a guy making videos on tech products and what I recommend and don't recommend to my viewers. And at the end of the day, I'm always gonna have an allegiance to my viewers, whether it's just me providing anecdotal evidence mixed in with other people I've spoken to in the industry or whether it's a full benchmark A to B testing, which I, as I've said in that video, I didn't have the right contacts or the right amount of data to get to the bottom of that issue. Though this whole ordeal in the last 10 years, I've just noticed such a frustrating trend that is occurring, not just in the hardware now, but also in gaming. It's almost like companies 
want to release a broken product, a product that should still be considered otherwise beta, and they'll just want the public to go out and test it and save them the time and hassle and get all the answers for them so they can make a better product and save a lot of money. But the problem is with hardware is you can't exactly do this as Intel's finding out. You have to have a product that is completely stable, especially on the business to business side. Now, Windows was talking about a 50% failure rate after a week of testing, and that is really scary. That is horrible news, especially when those particular clients of Intel's needs 100% stability with 0% failure rates. But also there's maybe the final question you guys have, and that is, can this whole thing be fixed by a micro code update or essentially a BIOS update? And what we've seen in the last few months is power profile BIOS updates. They haven't done anything. And in fact, they've made the performance worse, at least in the testing I've done. But then there's also been talks of, okay, other sort of under the radar settings, just drop your clock speeds down to say 5.4 gigahertz or 5.3 or 5.2 gigahertz. But that's the thing, you shouldn't have to do any of that. You should have a product that works 100% out of the box. And now also, when we look at this lowering the clock speeds, what Wendell's finding out with their data side uh, customers is they're having problems and their clock speeds aren't going over five gigahertz, for instance. So when you have these issues occurring for your business to business clients, it does speak to a fundamental flaw in the actual design of the CPU itself. And whether that's got to do with degradation in uh, specifically, or whether that's got to do with just the actual raw architectural design itself, we'll find out very soon. And so what my issues span from is when I was using my PC heavily, when I was editing videos and doing so many different things at once, and just doing a lot of actions per minute, I was finding my computer just completely either went really sluggish or just completely choked. But also the reason I'm going so hard on this topic and I'm not sort of stepping down on it is because I've had other friends in the tech space message me as well, as smaller YouTubers like Erock as well as Kyle, and they're just saying, look, I've got the same problems and I'm having the same issues as Tech yes City had. And they've shown their issues as well. But even then, uh, I think Kyle had to, he, like, he took down one of his videos because he was just copying a lot of hate on that video. And this is not the way, like as a tech community, we should be going, okay, uh, I just disagree with this. I don't think you're right. Instead, he gets all the name calling and all the crap to the point where he takes the video down because he just doesn't want to deal with that anymore. Me personally, I've dealt with hate in the YouTube comments for over a decade. I actually have a laugh out of it nowadays. I just really don't care. For me personally, when I present these things, I've got my own evidence. I've got my own, whether it's anecdotal or not, I've got my own evidence that I'm bringing to the table. And same with Kyle and Erock. They're presenting these things that they've experienced in their videos. It's not like they're just saying, oh, this YouTuber and this person did this, th th therefore this is right. No, they're giving their own experience. The reason why they're making their videos is because they've got some sort of evidence. But then you've got these guys in the comments, they just hate and they don't even provide any links, any references, or even any anecdotal evidence. And so those kinds of guys, you just got to ignore them. No matter how numerous they are, for me personally, they remind me of um, that Rod Rhymestone from that movie where he's talking about uh, masturbating. We'll roll the clip for you. Ooh, baby, I masturbate every day. Anyhow, guys, summing up today's video, I would stay clear of personally buying 13th and 14th gen CPUs right now. You'll notice I haven't been recommending them in actually any videos since I found out about this issue over a year ago. Uh, for instance, the i5 12400F, I've been re uh, recommending that a bit because it just doesn't suffer. I haven't heard of anyone suffering from the issues here uh, or have they been, um, when I personally use this CPU, it's been okay. It hasn't been the best thing ever, but it's been a pretty solid CPU. So. I think Wendell was talking about 12th gen not suffering the issues as well, which just throws a complete um, another layer of weirdness on because perhaps they had their 12th gen design already taped out. It was OK, but then they just tacked on that little bit more in an area that they shouldn't have on the CPU. And then that's bottlenecked the IO um, uh, die itself. So anyhow, guys, in the meantime, all the answers are coming to light. But yeah, I just I jumped the gun on this one over a year ago because I want to save people the hassle that I had. That was the main thing. It's like, <laughs> just, I don't want these headaches happening to you guys because it's frustrating wasting all your free time and getting to the bottom of things that just shouldn't 
be like this, especially from a company like Intel. So yeah. The final talking points, if you've got a 13th or 14th gen CPU and you're having a good time on it, just keep having a good time on it. As uh, these issues, I feel like it's more so can be niche. These issues that I came into is with a particular workflow that I do that really puts the CPU, especially the, I believe the input output hub under a lot of strain. And when that's under a lot of strain, it's gonna come out with problems or sluggishness and or both. And I feel like the 13900K, that's its Achilles heel, at least when I was using it. And I've now changed over to an i9-10850K and I've had zero issues. Every month that goes by, I just thank my lucky stars that I made that choice as soon as I did to change back to something that I knew worked the best in slot up until that point before I changed to the i9-13900K. Also, the final thing is, if the majority of people are telling you you're wrong, it doesn't always mean that you're wrong, especially if you've got this strong belief and you've got your own evidence that you know that you're right, then sometimes it's good to just ignore the noise and keep going. And so the message here is keep doing what you feel is best for your circle. And that's all I can say is, you know, at the end of the day, you gotta take care of you. Someone else ain't taking care of you. You're taking care of you, especially if you're an adult, right? So. I'm taking care of me, I'm taking care of Tech Your City, and I'm ultimately, after the, today's video, I'm definitely been taking care of my viewers. And hopefully you guys appreciate that. And with that aside, I'll catch you in another Tech video very soon, actually. We've got some juicy CPU comparisons coming up, and I'll catch you next time. Peace out for now. Bye.